Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise of War video I'm going to show you a guide about Retaliate Balin. Balin's commander type is leader which fits him perfectly since he wants a big army for his Retaliate build. And then looking at his attributes, his strongest attribute is Might, that is totally fine and this is what we would like to push. And after that comes his focus stat, which is also okay, like this is the secondary stat we can focus, but that's not that important. I mean, the more focus we have, the more damage we mitigate and that's it, but okay. So keep in mind, might is what you want. And speed, yeah, we are kind of slow, but that's not that bad. It's okay. In regards to my gear, I am running this right now, the Lang weapon with retaliate. Then the hop, finally I got a hold of the, the superior hobak with fire protection. It dropped a couple of days ago when I did my daily tips. So I got it from my tips. I can just only recommend to you guys go get your hobak with fire protection from your tips. And then let's continue. My gear, Cask of Submerged this is my helmet with anti-commander madness on it, just in case I am fighting Sauron. But there are better options over here. And then the hip lane with Ment, of course. So here we are at Balin skills. Let's start with his Respect Zero bottom tree. Lord of Moria is one of his main components for his Retaliate build to work. This is absolutely money, you need this. It has a 30% chance of recovering a certain percentage HP whenever one dwarf unit deals damage. And this is great, since with the Retaliate build, whenever we get hit, we counter strike and whenever we counter strike we get a chance to proc this healing effect that's great and also when you have maxed it out the chance is increased by five percent so instead of 30 percent of this proccing 35 percent chance of this proccing that's great and then we have heavily wounded just to have some anti-healing ability too you can put one point into it and then be done with it then we have Dwarven Leader, which is nice. This is giving you more damage mitigation for your Retaliate army and also a bit more damage. Since when you max it out, 7% damage mitigation at 7% increased damage by your Dwarven army. Then as top Revivalist title, we have this as an option to deal a bit damage if you have high respect level. But this isn't our main kit. It's really just there to do a bit of damage to get rid of Maybe some decoys, like a minimum command of a unit in the enemy army composition. Then we have Frightened over here. For the first four rounds, you get a chance of stunning two enemy units. Well, it can be nice, but not in this build. Right now, in the Retaliate build, you actually want your enemies not being in CC. Since you want to hit them back with Retaliate. That is where your damage is coming from. And also, whenever you Retaliate, you get a chance of proccing Lord of Moria. So, Frightened sounds nice on paper, but not for the Retaliate build. And then over here we have Inspiration for the first three rounds. Your army is getting a certain damage percentage boost and this is scaling with focus. But still, this isn't our main component for Retaliate. At Respect 3 we have Durant's Blood. This is okay, very nice to have. It pairs well with Whirlwind and this will be active five times in a battle. It is a reliable source of damage and I would definitely recommend going with this. And then we have also all in. Like whenever you have leftover points, I think we can put them all in here. That would make sense. But keep in mind, all in is only going to activate in a fight twice. So I'm not sure if that is worth the seven points. Maybe it makes more sense to spend them somewhere else. And then we have Warrior of Lonely Mountain. Now this is a core skill you need. This is absolutely crucial for your Retaliate build. It will give you physical damage mitigation as well as fire resistance. And this goes so well to counter Witch Kings or any other commander who is relying on fire damage. Now at the bottom we have Giant Slayer but this isn't really important right now. We have other priorities to go in first. And then last but not least, Longbeard. This can be very nice if you have a high respect level Balin. I can only recommend maxing this out. But yeah, this is the general overview. So to get your Retaliate Balin started, I would recommend your skills like this. So first of all, I already have the Retaliate weapon equipped. I'm ready to Retaliate. But now I want my army to 
stay as long alive as possible. I can facilitate that by putting my points into Lord of Moria. I want them to recover HP. And there isn't any other skill in the game that is recovering strong HP like Lord of Moria. This is 150% HP recovery whenever this triggers. And it can trigger whenever you hit someone. And you're going to hit lots of units whenever you get hit. Perfect skill. Then, while you're already here, why not put one point into Heavily Wounded to have some anti-healing. Now from here on onwards, I would jump over to Warrior of Lonely Mountain to give my army more survivability. This is physical damage mitigation. Make your army tough and also resistant against burn damage by 50%. This is a good counter against Witch Kings. Now, at this point I would go back to Durant's Blood just so my Balin himself gets a chance to deal some damage too. Since from here on onwards I'm going to maximize Whirlwind. Right now I think my Balin is at uh, respect level 7 or 8, which is why I can afford all of this. And then I would go back to Dwarven Leader and max this out. And whatever leftover points I have from here on onwards, I would Either put into a long beard or revivalist. But I think it would make more sense to go with long beard since you are going to max out seven points faster than revivalist. And revivalist isn't really dealing that much of damage and the recovery isn't that great. Also, it is activated every three rounds, so I really don't need this. Instead, I would like to have more damage for my Balin whenever he uses Whirlwind. There you go, this is your Retaliate build. Alright, it is time to talk about Balin's strengths and weaknesses. And just as always, I'm going to start to talk about his strengths first. And I can immediately say that his number one strength is that this commander is very strong against any melee army composition. His second strength would be that he has strong self-sustain, since we have Lord of Moria. His third strength is definitely his fire resistance with 50% burn damage reduced. His fourth strength is that this commander has also high physical damage mitigation. He provides that with Warrior of Lonely Mountain as well as with Dwarven Leader. And the combination of that is very strong. Last but not least, Balin has low upkeep costs. This is because his Retaliate build works with only one unit in his army. That could be Guardians, Iron Warriors or let's say if you are rich you can go with Depth Defenders. But in case of Guardians, those units are very easy to conscript which is why I am telling you guys that this is kinder economy friendly. But Balin also has lots of weaknesses. Now let's have a look at those. His number one weakness is, well, while he is very strong against only melee units, he is very weak against armies that have a hybrid composition, like a bit of melee units as well as heavy ranged units in his army. Whenever there are melee and ranged units in the enemy army, Balin can't retaliate against the ranged units in the background since the melee units in the enemy army are creating a gap. And this is a mechanic that doesn't let retaliate fight back and this is hurting Balin a lot and this is also why I say this is his number one weakness. But anyway, let's continue with Balin's second weakness which is anti-healing since anti-healing is countering Lord of Moria. His third weakness would be CC and what I'm referring to. Like let's say commander stun or army stun. Whenever your army is stunned you can't activate Lord of Moria thus you don't have any self-sustain to recover. And we also have Commander Stun, which we need to take care of. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I have heard that whenever the Commander is stunned, all of the titles as well as the skills are being shut down. If that is the case, I think that is an obvious weakness against the Retaliate build. But moving forward with Balin's fourth weakness, I can definitely say since our army consists of only one unit, we are kind of vulnerable against debuffing mechanics, right? Now, let me explain what I mean. Imagine if you are fighting against a Khaldun. Khaldun has a debuff Easterling. Easterling is reducing your army's attributes by 20%. So, 
That is like 20% less damage. Imagine if Kaldun has Frenzy, the special effect that triggers another auto attack. So on each round he can activate Easterling twice. That is minus 40% stats for your whole army. And this is very dangerous. Imagine if you are fighting against Kirun. Kirun can have not just only Easterling with Frenzy proc twice in a round, but also self-sustain his own army with his top respect zero healing skill. So this is why I think debuffing mechanics can be very strong against the retaliate build. His fifth weakness could potentially be evade. And why am I saying this? So whenever I fight a Gil Galad and that commander has evade for the first three rounds, I get totally destroyed by him. I know that guy has also a, a heavy ranged melee army composition, which is our first weakness, which he is exploiting. But you can't retaliate when the enemy is evading, right? So first thing is you can't deal damage. Since you aren't connecting, you can't self-sustain. And the sixth weakness of retaliate Balin is it is poison and focus damage. Vori of Lonely Mountain is only providing fire resistance. So that means no matter how much defensive stats your army has, poison and focus damage is going to play around that. So commanders such as the Shadow are a strong counter against that. Now let's have a look at Balin's gear and let's see what makes sense for a retaliate build in regards to his purple gear. I know I have listed golden items at the top as his weapon choices, but we don't have other choices over here, since Retaliate is only available with these two golden weapons. The best choice is the Matok of the Iron Hills by far. Tons of might and even plus attack for your dwarven units. This is a match make in heaven. Like perfect stats overall. But let's assume that you aren't lucky and that you just couldn't get a hold of a Matok of the Iron Hills. You can still rely on the Lang weapon since it has the same special effect as well. This is a fallback plan. Like the stats are nothing comparable with the Matok of the Iron Hills. This is perfect while Lang, it is just settling at this moment. But moving forward to his chess pieces. If we are fighting against Evil Side, all of you know by now that the Hallberg with fire protection is a must. If you are fighting good side for any reason, and if you are fighting strong focus damaging commanders such as Galadriel, or let's say the King of the Dead with Oathbreakers, or even Gandalf the White, Wilted Armor with focus protection is a must. If not, you can just use the scale mail with melee vigor. But in my opinion, you shouldn't use Balin against good side anyway, since that is not where he shines. Remember, his number one strength is he is very strong against melee compositions. Yes, he can be strong against mounted units commanders like Theoden, Eomir and Eowyn. That's a case where you're fighting only melee units, but we all know that good side likes to have a mix between melee and ranged units in general. And whenever that is the case, your retaliate build will not help you a lot. But let's move forward with our helmet. I have listed the full helm here. Same reason, tons of might. And as a special effect, we have Inspire. Since we are running only one unit in our army composition, that whole army is getting a 30% damage boost every two rounds. This is very reliable damage. But you can also play the defensive version of this if you want to go with melee vigor. Both make sense, I still don't know which is better towards the end. And as our accessory, I have listed the Hif lane here, like this is just perfect. We don't have any other purple accessory that makes more sense than this. You might argue that you can equip the Wizards Firework just to counter, or not counter, but at least not be naked against the Gil Galad. But I wouldn't use Balin to counter Gil Galad anyway, this isn't his strength. So it is Hif Lane with Ment for me. But let's also talk about Balin's golden gear. I don't need to explain the golden weapons at this point. You already know that we need this. This is mandatory. But in regards to his chest plate, I would definitely try Durin's plate. If I'm not fighting fire damage with tactical maneuvers or with fortitude of dwarves. And in regards to his helmet, I would definitely go with the iron bassinet. This helmet has all we want, might plus defenses for your dwarves. And in your retaliate build, you want to have as much defenses as you can. 
Being bulky is part of your retaliate build and you have the choice to run fortitude of soldiers for more damage mitigation or we have other choices over here such as fortitude of dwarves if you can't get a hold of fortitude of soldiers but also resolve of dwarves. Remember one of your weaknesses can be stun, you can't retaliate when you are stunned. Or how about one of your biggest weaknesses being ranged damage. Arrow suppression might be your special effect you want to have to counter that. Like Sunint is countering you hardcore in the very first three rounds. But with this you can at least try to compensate that weakness. But guys, I for example try to avoid fighting ranged army compositions. And then moving over to his accessory, I have listed Arrow's Pride over here. Again, perfect item. Tons of might, lots of HP for his army's tankiness, but above all it has Arid Luin formation. This is just perfect since it is increasing the damage of your army by a certain percentage and it scales with might. And guess what? You have tons of might, so this is making you even stronger. I'm not going to talk about Balin's Respect 10 item since it doesn't make any sense for the Retaliate build. And this video is all about that. So let's just continue with the troop composition. So in regards to Balin's Retaliate army composition, it is very easy. You basically just need one tanky unit, it needs to be a dwarven unit and then you're good to go. It could be your guardians, these guys are very tanky, have okay-ish amount of HP. But yeah, they also have some minus burn damage received and good defensive stats overall. I like these units a lot. Max it out and you're already good to go. If you want to step it up, you can also include Iron Warriors instead of Guardians. These guys are even better than Guardians. More damage, more HP and more defensive stats while dealing more damage against melee units. This is just perfect, but they are also more expensive. But how about conscripting Iron Warriors while simultaneously conscripting Guardians? And when, whenever you have depleted one unit, you just switch over to the other unit. You can do this all day long. In case that you have a strong economy and lots of gold to spare, you can also run Depths Defenders. This too makes lots of sense against like commanders who have fire damage in their army. This can be a hardcore counter against Witch Kings. Against anything that is running Corsairs or Alchemists. Because these guys, whenever they fight burn damage, they turn their own type of damage from normal, like from physical damage, to fire damage. And the enemy may not see this coming. Maybe they don't have fire protection, but if you have this, you totally devastate the enemy army with this. So, these are my recommendations. Like, how about conscripting Depth Defenders, Iron Warriors and Guardians simultaneously. And whenever you are depleted with one type of unit, you can just switch back to the other. And then, if you want to be a little tricky, you can also do this. And this is working with every retaliate composition. Have a minimum amount of sentinels and a minimum amount of hunters in your army. These units have swiftness, 100% chance to evade one attack. The sentinels have a 2. That means you now have decoys that can take away damage and ensure a bit more that your main retaliate units survive longer. So this is also something you can do, be it with your iron warriors or with your guardians. And there you go, this is your army composition. Alright, it is time to look at some reports. Let us start with Khaldun. So in this case, as you see, I have the depths defenders in my army composition just in case I'm fighting fire damage. So I have Lang, Durance played with vulnerability, Fulham with melee vigor and his lane with Mend. This is my spec over here and this is the result we have achieved. So it is kind of strange right to get this achievement over here. Khaldun is very strong. He even has his T4 rune units. And this is a devastating result. Look at the damage we have done. 330k damage is Khaldun's army receiving, while we received only almost 140k. 
This is a very decent report, if you ask me. Let's check out Kaldun's gear. Disrespect 10 item. Great Plate of the East. Cask of Pride. Ooh, this is very nice. It's fine smoking pipe. So, all right, maybe there is room for improvement if it comes to gear, but still, whenever the enemy has fire damage against depth defenders and the enemy isn't equipping Hallback with fire protection, this is what you are going to do to the enemy army. Now here is another Kaldun fight, but this time with guardians and no decoys, just to show you how this may look like. And this is the achievement we have. We have physical damage versus physical damage. Kaldun's gear looks like this. All right, there may be some room for improvement again, but still, it, it won't change the outcome by a lot. We are, the, the, the outcome of this battle will still favor Balin's Retaliate build. And keep in mind, we two are far away from getting best in slot gear. We need the Matic over here with tons of plus attack and might. We need Eridlu information. We need the Hauberg with fire protection. That too has high defenses. And the more defenses, the better for us. But what about the Iron Bassinet? Tons of might and defenses if we have that item. Now here we are fighting a Witch King and in this case I don't have Depths Defenders. If I had them this would have been favoring us even more. But right now having an achievement like this is actually great. Consider the fact that we don't have the the Hallback with Fire Protection. The only fire coverage I provide is Warrior of Lonely Mountain with this maxed out effect. But yeah I think this is still good. And the Witch King has outstandingly good gear, best in slot weapon, amazingly good good armor over here. Cask of Submerged Child, Aegis. This is Biss. Like this Witch King, every slot is best in slot. And this is the damage we have received and done. Almost 300k damage done. Like, alright, this is almost equal, but yeah. We have room for improvement if it comes to our gear and then this result is going to change again. Now here I have a Sauron fight and in this case this fight isn't in our favor. But there is a reason for it. So let's check out my gear. I needed to equip the quilted armor with focus protection. And why? Because Sauron is dealing lots of focus damage with overload and also soul siphon. So that is something I could have done better. And then Please keep in mind the items I recommended in the itemization part. I still don't have them here. And then Sauron also is able to make my commander fall victim to madness. And whenever that is the case, I can't use Lord of Moria to self-sustain my guardians. So Lord of Moria is my healing skill and whenever affected by madness, well, and use it. This is the damage Sauron has done. We have received three, 250k damage while only dealing 150k. And I wonder how this result is going to change once we get the recommended gear. And here we have another Sauron fight. I have switched the Guardians with Depth Defenders and instead of running Hallback with Fire Protection I am running Durin's Plate with Vulnerability. Everything else stays the same. What does Sauron have? He's He's got the Respect 10 item. Alright, that's okay. Tons of focus and plus HP for his army. But the special effect isn't really working against us. In this case, we aren't scared of this special effect. We aren't dealing commander damage that strong anyway. Then he has fire protection, bone mask. So this guy, if he had Corsairs in his army, since he has fire protection, our Depths Defenders couldn't have retaliated that hard. So this guy is more prepared against Depths Defenders. Bone Mask with Hysteria. One out Smoking Pipe with Sustain. But yeah, again, strong focus damage with Overload and Soul Siphon. I needed the Quilted Armor with Focus Protection. Let's also check out some Shadow reports. I do have two of those and this time I have included Iron Warriors instead of Depth Defenders or Guardians. So my gear is Superior Hobak with Fire Protection and the rest stays the same. Same build, nothing has changed. This is the result we have achieved. The Shadow has this gear 
And as you see, there is a lot of room for improvement if it comes to his gear. And as I see, he didn't commit into his elemental damage build, which is probably why he has lost this fight. Like, okay, he has Alchemist, but Shadow himself is capable of dealing lots of elemental damage by himself. And then this may have changed. Remember, one of our biggest weaknesses is poison damage and focus damage. The Shadow can provide both. If it comes to the damage we have dealt, well, this is in our favor. Almost 145k damage and he has dealt almost 130k damage to us. And here is a little fun fact. He has Swan Knights and Swan Knights tend to protect his allied units for the first three rounds. So every damage is going to be misdirected to them. But whenever retaliate procs, like my counter attack of retaliate procs, I immediately hit back the alchemist. And that is an, an attack, a counter attack that can't be misdirected to Swan Knights. So just a little bonus information. Here I am fighting the shadow once more and let this be my last report. I have tried something different out here. Instead of my typical infantry units such as Iron Warriors, Steps, Defenders or Guardians, I have tried out Ram Riders. I mean, maybe we can get some value with the minus defenses proc over here with Trample and see where it leads us. But this fight wasn't really a good example and you will see why. Let's check out my gear. So nothing special, everything stays the same, but the shadow is a beast. This shadow has exploited so many weaknesses I have. So first things first, he is dealing lots of poison damage, one of my weaknesses. This is scaling with his focus stat, that means he's dealing more damage. And then he has his troll wall over here, it's also kind of nice to have just to protect us weak backline but just like with the swan knights it is the same mechanic whenever the reapers are hitting us we still going to retaliate directly against the reapers what is bothering me though is his ranged army composition this is our biggest weakness whenever there is a melee ranged unit mix the ranged units are totally safe from our retaliate hits and these guys are also dealing poison damage and not like that's our weakness and guess what this commander has increased damage for the first three rounds and this commander is dealing poison damage since he has maxed out undertaker so poison damage again he is playing one of our weaknesses against us while also providing a bit focus damage and also increasing the elemental damage we receive Again, further increasing our weakness with this. Another weakness, applying Nazgul Screech like a stun. We can't retaliate when we are stunned, right? In the first round. So he is already starting to extremely snowball us from the start. Like, this is a crazily good shadow player. I like what this guy has done. This, like, his, his build and his gear makes so much sense. And he is bursting me hardcore. And his accessory, Box of Knowledge, good stats. This is the fitting type for the Shadow, he is a strategist. And guess what? More elemental damage we receive. And this is also scaling with focus. Amazingly good gear and build for the Shadow. One of the few hardcore counters against Balin. And as you see, I am speaking from own experience. The Shadow and Sunint are very hardcore counters against Balin's Retaliate build. Unfortunately, I couldn't find my Sunint fight. It was a couple of weeks ago and already out of my reports. But yeah, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. I see you guys next time.